Good afternoon, my name is Brad Abibi. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about Japanese junior public high schools and American public high schools. The Japanese flag here and the American flag. What is life like in a public Japanese junior high school? What is life like in an American public junior high school? Not surprisingly, I can answer the latter question with little hesitation. But the first question is a question that I could not come up with a confident response until July of 2002. At that point in time, I had just completed teaching an eye-popping and exciting year at three junior public high schools in Japan. The students, teachers, and way of doing things are certainly similar in some aspects in both environments, but once I came and taught a year in Japan, I realized that Japanese and American public junior high schools were even more different than I had anticipated. American and Japanese junior public high schools are similar on a few fronts. First of all, in all of it in Japan, and in some schools in the U.S., the junior high schools are three-year schools. In essence, the junior high school students in Japan would be considered 6th, 7th, and 8th grade students in America. Japanese and American schools each have a student body of between 500 and 1,000 students. But the biggest distinction between the two countries is the amount of students in each classroom. Larger rounds are in Japan, where between 35 and 40 students sit aligned in six rows and seven rows deep in small wooden desks. When I was teaching in these schools, I was amazed at how much little room I had between the chalkboard and the first row of seats. I truly felt like I was in a mini trash compactor. In addition, it was even worse in the summer months because none of the rooms had air conditioning, and they still do not now. And one lesson I taught felt like 45 minutes in a steam bath. It was very hot. In each country, there are also three vacation periods throughout the school year. In the U.S., the winter and spring breaks are about one week in length, while the summer vacation lasts for 10 weeks. In Japan, the lengths of the breaks differ in that the spring and winter breaks are each two weeks long, but the summer vacation is only for six weeks. The major difference in the two school systems is that all the schools in Japan are year-round schools, while in America there are only a few schools that are year-round. In addition, the Japanese school year begins in April, not August, and ends in the middle of March, not in the middle of June, like in America. My wife, who is Japanese, told me that the spring season, where cherry blossoms and flowers bloom, signifies a new and fresh beginning like the new and fresh beginning of the school year. I understand and respect the meaning behind the school year beginning in April, but as a teacher and as a former school-age student, I personally still favor the American system where we get 10 weeks off in the summer and begin anew at the, at the end of August. In America and in Japan, there are five seven-hour school days, 45-minute lessons, and basically all the same subjects are taught. The only exception is that Jap in Japan, Japanese is not, in Japan, um, English is taught in the curriculum. English has been added to the Japanese school curriculum within the last 10 years, but the Japanese students are still struggling mightily to grasp English. The major reason is that although the Japanese teachers of English have a college degree in English, their speaking skills, skills are still not so good. Their skills generally lie in writing and reading, and so do their students. In fact, about 50% of the teachers that I team taught with could speak very little English, and almost all of them spoke Japanese exclusively when teaching their students. This was very frustrating to me, because these teachers would even tell their students to sit down or stand up or open your books in English. Of course a teacher can teach in any way he or she prefers, but personally I thought if the teachers had a little bit more expectations of their students and of their ability levels, they would have gotten more production out of their students. Over the past several years, the English curriculum has shifted to the better in the Japanese opinion and in my opinion, 
because presently the teachers are focusing more on strengthening their students' speaking and listening skills as opposed to only focusing on the writing and reading abilities. Another similarity between Japan and, the, and in the U.S. is that there is not much of a difference in the makeup of Japanese and American adolescents. They oftentimes struggle through the same awkward stages of puberty, and many are shy, self-conscious, noisy at times, and heavily concerned about their peers, teachers and parents, and what they think about them. I think the boys and girls are definitely as intelligent as each other in both countries, but the boys generally are a little bit more disruptive than the girls are. However, as an aside, I do not believe these Japanese and American boys, and any other boys for that matter, are disruptive and aggressive in nature because they are boys. Um, we've read uh, several readings about this in our class this year. Instead, I agree with author William Pollock, who stated, how you treat a boy has a powerful impact on who he becomes. He is as much a product of nurturing as he is of nature. As an example, of 20 boys in my typical Japanese, sorry, of 40, 20 boys in my je typical Japanese lesson, I would say 17 or 18 boys displayed great self-control and re were quite respectful to me and my team teacher. Thus, I believe that these well-behaved boys most likely had parents or have parents who nurtured them and loved them and taught them how to be polite, hardworking, and respectful. In both America and in Japan, I would say that most teachers generally work hard, create solid lesson plans, and are truly devoted to helping their students learn and become fine members of society. However, as I'll point out later, the Japanese teachers work more hours and more days than the American teachers. Each school system in both countries has principals and vice principals in command, but at the three schools that I taught at in Wakayama City, there were no female principals or vice principals. Japanese women have slowly become, begun to obtain higher positions in schools and in the workforce, but American women are still ahead of Japanese women in this department and have been for a longer period of time.